So as you can see, I've been messing around with fire and smoke a lot in my recent renders, and you might be thinking, oh, how did you achieve such realistic results in Blender? And there is the rub. I'm not using Blender to do this. In fact, I'm using a program called EmberGen, and I use this uh, simulations in EmberGen to bring it back into Blender, and then you render it. Either way, let me tell you about this program, uh, because even if you don't have it, you might find it interesting. And I'll show you how I make a realistic simulation. So... As you can see, Embergen, what the fuck am I looking at? It's a it's a node-based program, but unlike other, you know, things like Blender or whatever, we're not making shaders, we're not making geometry nodes. These nodes are used to make simulations. And uh, the impressive thing about this is that it's all real time. So you can see I move the object and, you know, the smoke, the fire, it follows. Um, let's do a bit of a breakdown. So the very first thing, we kind of read this thing from left to right, and by the end of this tutorial, we're going to have a good-looking simulation, so... But first, we got to break it down. Uh, reading from left to right, we start off with a shape being a primitive. That primitive can be a torus, as you can see. It can be a box. It can be a sphere. I mean, we can even import in a mesh, uh, which I might get into in a second tutorial, how you bring stuff in from Blender to Embergen and then bringing it back out. Uh, but you can pick a primitive, and... Uh, after that, that is being emitted. So in other words, this sphere has fire and smoke coming out of it. If this wasn't attached, nothing would happen, right? So we have a sphere emitting shit, and uh, this noise makes it more interesting. If we didn't have the noise, it would just be kind of like this plain thing going upwards. This just adds turbulence. You can control the amount of turbulence. Here's a lot of turbulence. Here's a little turbulence. Here is just the right amount of turbulence. After that, uh, we have this thing being emitted. And by the way, in this emission, we have a lot of control. And this is actually where I get the look that I'm going for. So I'm using, uh, by the way, middle, middle mouse scroll and then holding shift and you know stuff like that to navigate. Uh, the fuel rate is kind of the main one that I'm using. You see, I increased the fuel rate. All of a sudden, you have something that looks like it's in a Michael Bay movie. Um, you can also control. A second one I like is the pressure, which you can kind of think of as expansion. If I add pressure, whoa, this thing expands until it kind of consumes the bounds of this thing. And you can change those bounds. But you can also have negative pressure, which I assume is kind of like a contraction, as you can see. Um, I'm just going to add a tiny, tiny bit of pressure. And I'm kind of happy with the way that this looks. Okay, so we have a shape. It has randomness. We're emitting stuff. We can control, like I said, we can control the amount of fuel we can control the amount of smoke that comes off of this so here's like a lot of smoke and it consumes it whatever moving onwards next we have the simulation this is where the magic happens this is where um, all this information the shape how much fuel is it emitting all these uh, initial constraints this is where the actual calculations happening and uh, the main thing you're going to notice is if i hit b on the keyboard B for bounding box, you're going to see the bounding box of the simulation. And the smoke kind of gets cut off at the top. So what I could do is increase the bounds up here, apply new resolution. Now this thing is slightly taller and the smoke can rise. Um, also in the simulation, you can control a bunch of shit. Do you want wind? Do you want shredding? Do you want combustion is the main one I'm going to be looking for. Uh, because I want the smoke to not reach that high, I want it to dissipate. I want it to get gone faster. So you can see if I increase this a lot, it's basically only fire. If it's a little, the smoke kind of never leaves. So I'm going to have a good amount of dissipation. Again, I'm just honing in the kind of look that I want to go for. Let's turn off bounding box. Um, also, another thing we're going to play with is the resolution um, in the sense of either voxel size or you could upscale, whatever. Uh, for now, I'm happy with this. Uh, next order of business is let's actually go to the render tab. So now we're looking through the camera and everything here is a node. We have a camera node. That camera node can be used to create a different like resolution and stuff like this. Um, for now, let's just do a square resolution. Um, so I'm going into the shading and let's look at only our render. And by the way, again, real time. Very, very cool. Um, in the shading, this is where I hone the look of this. Do I want it to glow a lot? Do I want it to, you know, the shadows should be, they be bright, dark, whatever. Uh, what I like to play with is scattering. Scattering is basically going to tell us, if I increase the flame, how much kind of the light leaks through 
in some sense, the smoke is what it looks like to me, like multiple scattering and fume effects. Direct light contribution is going to brighten up our smoke and fire because there is, in fact, a light. If we go back to our scene, we have a directional light in our scene uh, that we can rotate, as you can see right there. It basically works like Blender in a lot of ways, but um, it's not as garbage as Mantaflow. Uh, so once I'm happy with this, so I've done this, I've done that, maybe the final thing is to go into scene, and just like in uh, Blender, you play with the gamma, do I want it to be kind of dark and whatever, um, and the exposure. So here we have a kind of very bright looking, kind of dark smoke generating thing here. Uh, once we're done with that, I'm going to show you two ways to use this information. First of all, I'm going to show you how to export this out as just like a video. Um, so this is one simulation we made. And second of all, I'm going to show you how to bring this information into Blender. So then you could, you know, do it in 3D in Blender. So uh, starting off with a normal export, again, all of this is set up for you is we have all these nodes, blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm making sure I'm not on render all, but I'm on render. And you could see this is the component that's being captured. The way you want to think about this is this render node is saying what it, what information are we going to send to render. Uh, it could be the alpha. There's a lot of stuff. It could just be the smoke with a direct light. It could be albedo. It could be just the fire. If I could find just the fire. Emissive and scattering. You know, it's up to you. Uh, but I'm going to send only the render. And we're going to export that image as a RGB file. We don't need an alpha. And if I wanted to export this, you make it a sequence. Bada bing, bada boom. Bob's your uncle or your cousin. <laughs> and I'm going to make a, a new folder for this. And I'm going to call it, what should we call this? First sim. And I'm just giving this a, a naming convention. Um, at this point... Let's say we're happy with the simulation and we're ready for export. I don't want to export this. I want to export the highest resolution version of this possible. Um, so for the image size, I'm going to bump this up to like a thousand by a thousand. So we have like a 1K by 1K image. And then for the simulation, now that we're happy with it, uh, we can upscale it. So I'm going to make it twice. And you can see now it's using 10 million particles instead of 5 million uh, particles or voxels. We're going to use Fast Upscaler, apply the new resolution. This is going to give us basically the same simulation. You can see it's playing slower because it has more to calculate. Uh, but now there should be twice the amount of detail. So once you're happy with that, you have an export path. You have your PNG sequence. And let's render it for, let's say, 100 frames. Uh, this is something that we can export. So just right-click and export. And you're going to notice if you've ever used Mantaflow, you've ever used fume effects or something like this, uh, this is ridiculously fast. In fact, what we might want to do is speed up the simulation a bit, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so it seems like 100 frames while, and let's see this uh, new folder. Wow, it does give us a very nice render. <laughs> it doesn't seem to actually accomplish that much within that amount of time. So let's speed it up so that when we bring it into Blender, that's also going to be the case. So I'm thinking what we can do is in the simulation, we go to time control. And if we can actually bring down the hertz, basically, it seems like Embergen uses some kind of real time system. And then it's our job uh, to decide um, how many frames that takes up. So you could see now within the same 100 frame span, when we brought it down to 30, um, it's accomplishing a lot more because the time steps a lot to... Uh, larger in some sense. If we make it even smaller, you could see, whoa, now it's playing super fast, but it's low detail. Uh, so it's up to you. We're going to go for like a 30 frames per second kind of approach. Okay, I'm happy with that. So that's 100 frames. Again, right click, export. We have all this set up with our nodes. And now you can see this uh, explosion should go a lot further in its progression until, the, until we actually start seeing some smoke. Yeah, there we go. And I am happy with that. Beautiful. Um, so this is how I rendered out a lot of my explosions. Now, uh, for doing 3D integration, because you saw I did those fireballs, I did whatever, I actually needed to bring that info back into Blender. And here's how I did it. So we have the shape, it's emitting, it's simulating, and it's generating a volume. 
And this volume is what I'm interested in because if I could take it and bring it into Blender before we do the scene, the render, all this shit I don't care about, uh, then we can just do the rest in Blender. So I'm gonna take VDB, which stands for something, volume, something, something. And you wanna add an export VDB node. You just click and drag. Export VDB is gonna give us a file format that gives us 3D information about well, you can control what it's about. We want the density, that's smoke. We want the flames, that's fire. And you can also bring stuff like temperature and fuel. Uh, there's an argument for bringing temperature, but I'm not gonna mess with that now. So I'm gonna export the first 100 frames, although these aren't frames, they're kind of three-dimensional frames of a simulation. We wanna export this VDB, and just for uh, simplicity, in the simulation, I'm gonna bring down the scale again, uh, just so that we have a faster playing thing, which means there's gonna be less data in the export. On export VDB, I'm gonna go back to the uh, new folder I created, which was called uh, first sim. In here, I'm gonna make a folder called VDB. And this will be our v VDB first sim. And once you're happy with that, 100 frames, blah, blah, blah. Beautiful, click export. And again, the difference is this time it's exporting three-dimensional files uh, that I'll show you how to bring into Blender. So as you can see, they're VDB files, and they get bigger and bigger and bigger um, in size. Why? Because there's more smoke and fire in the scene, so there's more to calculate. In Blender, what we can do now is you want to do a import VDB, or what you can do is you can do Shift A, and then it's like in volume import VDB. Uh, which is a, a recent feature. I think it was in like 2.93 or something it was added. I mean, I know we're in 3.0, but whatever. Uh, in VDB, you want to bring all this stuff in. And you could see, oh, where is it? I mean, it's somewhere. And then you start seeing this. You're like, oh, it's huge. Oh, did I import in the wrong VDB? This was from a different simulation. <laughs> you might even recognize it. Okay, let's go back to the uh, VDB that I showed you. So you can see I've uh, done this to bring files into Blender before. Uh, so I'm going to go to first sim, VDB, import it in, and there we go. So you could kind of recognize the simulation. So if you kind of look at that, does that not look the same as this, you know, minus the shading? Well, it does. Um, all we need to do is kind of recenter it and resize it. So I'm just going to scale it down, put it closer to the center on the Y axis. And there we go. Uh, so when you import in a, a VDB, it's basically like this 3D object that you can scale, you can rotate, you can even duplicate it and have many of these. So this is kind of the advantage here. And if you go into the VDB settings, you can see we have the density, that's the smoke, and we also have the flames. And you can almost tell one of these, let's only have this be 100 frames. You can almost tell one of these is flames because it doesn't go as high, and then smoke goes a lot higher. Okay? And there's settings you can mess with here. But let's just get a nice shader going. So I'm going to open up Cycles, GPU. You can already see it's rendering our smoke, but not our fire. I'll show you how to fix that. You want to go to the Shading Workspace. Again, I would recommend Cycles for this. What we need to do is we need to make a custom material. It's already using principled volume. Uh, that somehow accounts for all this. Uh, the trick is, the trick is, remember, we have density. And it's already using this attribute. It's using the density information. If I was to delete this, it doesn't know what to do, right? It's using density information to say, where's their smoke? And then for the temperature, uh, which you could have imported in, uh, we're just going to use flames, which is this information right here. Uh, for the temperature, we're going to say, let our flames be 6,500. Again, you could have used an attribute for this and add some black body tint. And you can see, all of a sudden, we have both uh, smoke and fire. Um, because this is this uh, temperature is basically saying, how bright is this fire? If we bring it down, it's going to get closer to this kind of dim red look. Like if I make it 4,000, or if I make it 2,000. There we go. You can play around with this number. But um, you can see, we can kind of control the look of this. And if you're like, oh, why is my smoke dark? Whereas it was light in uh, Embergen, it's because we're using path tracing now. So this actually respects lights. So if I make a light that is much brighter, like much, much brighter, you can start seeing that it has an effect. 
I think the issue is our VDB is so massively big that the light needs to be huge to affect it. But you can see before, after, this thing's actually a volumetric. That um, not only can you put in your scene, but because it's emitting light in all this, it will actually emit light on uh, different objects. Um, where is our plane? There we go. So you can see now where our uh, thing is casting lights and shadows and all this. Uh, so this is how I did the fireball, for example. And if you guys are interested in the whole workflow, like how do I track a shot in Blender and bring it into Embergen, simulate, and then bring it back and do all this, let me know. Uh, but in essence, you could either render it in Blender now from you know the camera point of view, which I deleted. So let's add a camera and move it somewhere useful. So you could either render it in Blender, uh, which takes longer, but has the physical interactions, or again, you can render it in Embergen, which is almost kind of shocking um, how fast it renders. <laughs> like, look at that, and it looks better too. Um, but yeah, let me know if you wanna learn about the full workflow. And other than that, that is a wrap on this tutorial. 15 minutes, 16 minutes, not bad. So hopefully you guys learned something. I know a lot of you probably don't have Embergen installed, but it's a piece of software I've been using a lot, so I just wanted to cover it in a tutorial because it is something I use. Um, I know there's a student version that's not free, but $60, which is pretty good for what it is. It's real time. Uh, fluid simulation, smoke and fire, so whatever. Um, either way, at the end of all these tutorials, I always like to mention I keep these tutorials free. How? Because of the generous 740 to 750 patrons that are getting three things in return. You could click the link in the description and get these three things. One, uh, early access to tutorials. You could have seen these tutorials early. Uh, two, blend files, project files. You don't need them. Everything I make on these tutorials since 2019, you don't need to make it yourself, right? I uh, usually upload the blend files or the project files if there's some footage or whatever. Um, you can just use those assets and use them in any of your projects. And then thirdly, um, every once in a while, I make a exclusive tutorial. Those are paywalled. I try not to do those too often uh, because the whole business model is put everything up for free and then everybody gets the knowledge. And then those of you that see value in it can be like, oh, I like this. I like the CG Matter videos, whatever. And then you can uh, head over there. But that's up to you. Anyways, uh, thank you for listening to me ramble about Embergen and Blender. Um, I've been messing around with it so much, creating those little short VFX clips. And I think I finally figured out the workflow uh, that I like for it. But it, it's pretty time consuming. Either way, thank you for watching. And I will see you on the next tutorial.